I think we'll probably just give it a minute for some more participants to join and then get kicked off. All right, it looks like we have about half of the people who have registered to join, so I think it probably makes sense for us to get kicked off so everyone can enjoy their lunchtime learning and get some CPE. So um, good morning, good afternoon. Um, my name is Jen Cadigan. I'm a partner at Cross Country and welcome to our virtual roundtable. We are super excited today to have some amazing speakers from Hotspot and Tectonic. Um, and we're really excited to talk to you on the subject of managing spend to fuel growth and success. So with that, I would love to take a minute to introduce everyone to the panelists. So thank you again for your time today. Super exciting topic, I think, for um, in general, but especially an important topic for this industry. I know we have some guests across all industries here, but really the focus today is on life science. Um, I think we have a great representation of friends and clients and, and clients um, who are friends across all industries and from coast to coast. So again, I'm Jen Cadigan. I'm a partner at Cross Country um, Consulting in our accounting advisory practice. I'm based in Boston, Massachusetts, where I focus on um, our biotech space, in particular supporting emerging growth um, companies that are in the um, clinical phase, as well as some emerging commercial companies. Um, I'd love to introduce us to our panelists um, here. We have Mike, who I love to speak about himself. He's um, from Coupa, uh, VP of Life Science Sales. David, a three-time Coupa customer, and Rohit, a two-time Coupa customer. So um, with that, I'm going to just launch a few polling questions um, just to get some stuff started to make sure everyone gets some CPEs. So let's see who's here today. Um, what company is, what industry is your company in? I know it's very life science focused, but we so we drilled down on a few sub sub industries there, um, and we also wanted to get a polling question of how large is your industry, just to kind of understand um, who we're talking to and making sure we're catering our conversation appropriately. So we'll give everyone a few minutes to respond to those polling questions. And while we'll, we do that, um, maybe we'll just flip to the agenda so we can cover a little bit of the overview for today. So for CPE credit, we want to make sure we cover these um, major um, learning objectives, which will be reducing administrative bottlenecks, driving efficiency in AP, as well as eliminating pain points um, in standardizing the internal controls. So at the end of this um, course, um, we hope that you'll be able to learn how uh, the panel here has leveraged Coupa to achieve process improvements through some real-life examples um, provided by both um, Hotspot and Tectonic. With that, do we want to just share the polling results so we know who's here? All right, so a lot of biotech in the audience, over 50%. And really, if we're looking at all life sciences collectively, um, definitely an overwhelming majority. So thank you all again for being here. And it looks like a really good mix, actually. It's almost as even as we can get. Um, from company size. So I think that will lead to a really good, robust conversation. And of course, we encourage anyone who's in the webinar to um, post some comments in the Q&A. Uh, we'll either answer those as the webinar goes on, um, maybe we'll save some for the end, and maybe they'll just be covered in the content. In either way, we will absolutely respond back individually to all questions post in, in the poll. So I think that covers all of our logistics, and we can really dive into the content for today. Um, quick background on cross country, and then I'll pass the mic to Mike, and then we'll pass it to our panelists, because I know everyone's really excited to hear about them and their stories. So 
Quick background on Cross Country. We are a consulting firm. Um, we provide end-to-end -end services across accounting advisory, across risk, across technology transformation, which of course is what we're here to talk to everyone about today, uh, where we use tools um, such as Coupa to help improve those processes. Uh, we are a firm that is international, five offices in the US, four globally, and nearing 900 employees um, you know, across the globe. So um, that's Cross Country in a nutshell. Always happy to talk more um, and love to pass the mic to uh, Mike to learn a little bit about Coupa and our panelists. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jen, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, Michael Mann, I'm Regional Vice President of our Life Science, Med Device, and Healthcare team. I support our organizations on the West Coast, and my peer, Jeff Bird, who many of you may know, is also here today and supporting the East. So really excited to be a resource for everybody. I know we have some prospective and current customers on the line. Uh, so I wanted to just give a short overview of Coupa and then, of course, get into today's Q&A. Uh, so as many of you may know, you know, Coupa is a comprehensive business spend management platform and community. We work with companies of all sizes, whether you're on QuickBooks and you're about 14 employees or you're running multiple ERPs, global, commercial, around the world. We can support you uh, across any industry and really make life easier for the end user. Essentially, everything that we do here at Coupa is built around you, the end user, which you can see on the far right side of the screen, really making it easier for our scientists, for anyone in operations, supply chain, purchasing, finance and AP, executives, IT, and legal, really making it easier for them to do their job, whether they're submitting a purchase request, processing an order, processing an invoice, making a payment, submitting a, an expense reimbursement, really making that life easier and capturing all of that spend. And of course, supporting you as you grow, you're gonna hear about how Tectonic and Hotspot both deployed some of our power applications, such as contract lifecycle management or risk and performance management, really streamlining some of the supplier onboarding and contract management processes as well to get their arms around all of that business spend. And really the most exciting thing about Coupa is the community, right? We have the ability to provide insights to everyone, whether it's here virtually, in person, or right within the Coupa platform, providing insights, best practices, and recommendations so that you can spend smarter. We make a big impact across 3,000 customers and also 8 million suppliers today that are using Coupa for free to really digitize that process. And we also collectively have over $4.2 trillion worth of spend. Uh, many of you know we, we support companies across the world, and we have thousands of consultants and support services staff to ensure success for all of you. So I'm um, really excited for today in particular because David and Rohit have both implemented Coupa several times, five times between the two of them. So they have so many great insights and I'm really excited for today's discussion. So with that, you know, before we get into some of the Q&A and hear a little bit more about Hotspot and Tectonic, we wanna hear a little bit more about some of the folks that are on the line. So if you could help us, it'd be great to hear how you go through your buying process today, whether that's done manually or if you have a point solution, maybe you're leveraging your ERP. Uh, we do know some Coupa customers are on here as well, or maybe you're using another system and then of course, what solutions you're working with from an accounting or ERP perspective. I think that's gonna be very helpful for us as we go through today's discussion. So we'll give it a minute for, for everybody to respond and then we'll turn over the next slide to hear more about uh, Hotspot and David, and of course, uh, Tectonic and Rohit. All right. So it looks like the majority of us right now are using some other purchasing system today. Um, and then we know that there's a lot of options out there. And then it looks like uh, we got a large group of Coupa customers here today too, almost uh, a third of the folks that are here with us. So thank you all for being here. Hopefully you'll get some great best practices and insights from David and Rohit. And then we also got a fair amount of folks that are doing things manually. So I think you'll certainly get a lot um, out, of, out of today and hearing how David and Rohit have really eliminated those processes. Um, no surprise that we see the majority of folks on NetSuite, especially for some of those smaller and up-and-coming uh, life science organizations. We do see a few folks that have QuickBooks, Microsoft, and SAP. Um, it looks like a few others that uh, don't have ERPs listed at this time. So uh, for those that, you know, have any questions on how Coupa integrates, we'll certainly set up a follow-up discussion on that. Uh, but just know that we are an open platform and we can connect to any system that has open API. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to David for a short intro on Hotspot. Yeah, thank you, Mike. So came over to Hotspot um, back in 2021. Basically, we were closing out our Series C. 
and came on board to really kind of put the company into position to scale. Uh, we were marching towards the clinic, which we just got into at the beginning of this year. Um, obviously, with that, we had a you know a large increase in employees, um, and as such, we just you know they, the executive team basically said, "Hey, it's time to build out the finance team." So we came over here. First thing we did was to start looking at systems, and and obviously, it, it, as it ended up, I, I went with Coupa. So HubSpot is my third, uh, it's actually my fourth biotech company. So I put Coupa in at seventy five percent of them. I would have done a hundred, but I the the other one was just. Uh, a little too a little, a little too complicated to tear apart, which we can get into later on in the Q and A if, if people want to. And then, um, and basically, just a, a quick uh, recap on on a hot spot. We we when I came here, it's forty people. We're currently at seventy five employees. Uh, when we implemented the system, we were around sixty employees. Um, so uh, we're, we're well positioned um, for scalability, and um, we can dig into that um, as we go forward. David. Sure. Thanks, David. So I'm Rohit Anand, Senior Director of Finance and the Controller at Tectonic Therapeutic. Uh, I've been in biotech, a few biotechs, and um, you know we were founded in 2019. Our biotech works on the discovery of antibodies with GPCRs. We're a preclinical stage company. Um, you know when we when I joined, uh, we were 29 employees strong, and we grew to 54 uh, in those 12 months. We were processing less than 150 invoices per month, and now we are well more than double that volume. We went from about 16 million in spend to 32 million in spend. Uh, we grew out an accounting team. We implemented Coupa, uh, NetSuite. We had a lot of changes, so there was a lot of growth that was happening. Uh, we like to double numbers, so we doubled uh, systems, we doubled processes, we doubled headcount. Uh, we doubled uh, quite a bit, and I'll be happy to jump into some of the details during the Q and A. Um, then Coupa was extremely helpful for us at the time, as was cross country in the implementation process. Excellent. Thank you, Robert. Great. Um, thank you so much for that that background. And I know we're definitely going to dive in a little bit more with some of the those stories that you alluded to in your intros. So thank you again. Um, I think maybe to start out, I just really love, and, and maybe David, it makes sense for you to start, but I'd love for you to touch on some of the challenges that you think life science companies are facing today. Over 70% of the people in the audience are at life science companies. So um, would love to talk about those challenges and would love to maybe get a, your view on you know, what, why having a best-in-class spend management system like Coupa has been critical for those organizations. Yeah, sure. sure. Thank you, Jen. Um... You know, I think when I when I take a step back and I, I kind of look at the biotech industry as a whole, I think everybody knows there's a lot of pressures going on in the, the macroeconomics, right? Um, you know, I've been seeing a lot of pressure from our board um, around cash runway and expectations of how long your cash runway is. You know, I think they're really pushing towards at least two years right now for cash runway. And I think, you know, when the board's looking at that, they're really looking for like, us to show them that we can reach meaningful like milestones that produce value for the company, right? So with all those questions coming in from the, from, from the board, I think what's really saved us since we've had Coupa in just about a year now, um, it really boils down to, A, we have the ability to accurately manage our spend to a budget that's approved by the board. Um, it also allows individuals to manage their, their own POs uh, in a very efficient way. And I think at the end of the day, we, it also gives us a lot of accurate data to allow us to kind of price out what, it, what the true costs are for programs. And we can use that, th those costs to actually produce our, our models for the boards or our board. And, you know, they're really looking at, especially we're a platform-based company. So we have multiple different indications in our pipeline and we're having the board coming asking us for three, four, five different scenarios on, on how we can get to meaningful milestones, uh, including whether it's through business development, top ups. Uh, I, I don't want to say the market right now, but let's you know cross our fingers if it's the markets or you know how are you traditionally fund those biotechs. Um, so the system's been key in, in, in allowing us to to get accurate information to our core strategy team to really get in front of the board with. Um, accurate models to make key decisions. 
Excellent. Rohit, anything that you'd want to chime in for challenges or um, how spend management in place is critical to the organization? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think uh, David covered all the high level points. I think there's some additional challenges that you have with just operational um, processes and visibility into the spend that you have. Um, whether it's biotech or it's other industries, that's something that tends to be a pain point. So management can make the appropriate decisions that they need to make and understand a lot of the other uh, accounting processes that flow through. Um, so those are some of the challenges that we definitely had prior to Coupa. Great. Thanks for sharing. And maybe it's a good point for us to pause and launch a polling question to the audience just to sort of see what challenges are really top of mind um, for your organization. Um, whether it relates to your your current processes, systems, lack of visibility, the realizing savings, compliance, or scaling. Uh, with thematically, I, I think um, Hotspot and Tectonic both both covered pain points related to to certain of those topics. So definitely curious to see what the group has going on. It'll give everyone a few more minutes to respond to the polling question. And then maybe we can react a little bit to, to the results to see what's going on with the group. I'm looking at this, it, it kind of lines up with what I was thinking, but David or Rohit, any, any reactions to what you're seeing going on in, in the audience today with lack of visibility seeming to be um, the, the main leader in, in pain points going on? I'm not surprised uh, with you know, lack of visibility and control issues. A lot of processes are manual prior to an automated platform. And um, it's a struggle that a lot of companies and individuals have because the finance and accounting teams are lean and mean. And beyond the finance and accounting teams, the extended R&D team, uh, they're also limited to what they need to do, right? Time is of the essence when you're in biotech and or even in fintech. Um, we are trying to get to the market as quickly as possible in drug development. So oftentimes people are circumventing controls and you don't want that and you need a system that's going to come in and help uh, streamline the process and facilitate those controls. So that way you're an audit ready organization and whatever that you know next stage of the organization is. So I'm definitely not surprised here. Thank you. Yeah, and actually, just just to add to that, um, I, I think what I've seen a lot, actually, at the past couple of companies that I've been at, I, I, the punch outs seem to be a really really good hit, um, with especially with our lab individuals, mm -hmm. um, with ordering ease of ordering. Um, on top of the fact that once the punch out is set up, it actually creates a lot of efficiencies for the finance team because it's a lot of low dollars, low risk. You can reduce your review. Uh, and there's controls around um, the punch outs that um, really create a lot of time saving for, for time saving for the, the finance team. And I mean, I think last week, I, I think I got two requests for two new punch outs. And I, I actually had to tell people like, you know, it's not every time you order, we can't just put a punch out for every new vendor. But I will say Coupa actually has really good partners um, as part of their punch outs. It just, you know, without actually doing additional punch outs outside of their partners, you can actually get a lot of coverage um, for, for lab supplies uh, in the biotech industry. Awesome. No, thanks for sharing that. And, um, you know, I think I, my, one of my next questions goes back to Rohit's comment about operational efficiencies, right? And how time is of the essence. We're trying to get, you know, things progressed in our pipeline, making sure that our folks are efficient, going to your point, Dave, and making it really, really easy for the scientists. So, you know, Rohit, um, this question would be for you. You know, what are some of the operational efficiencies that, that you've seen as a result of deploying Coupa? And how has, you know, some of the improvements really started to reduce the bottlenecks for, for R&D? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. And um, I have a couple of examples that I'd like to share. One is when I was at my prior company, um, we were a private company and we went IPO. And I'll bring this example just to the accounting function where we all are part of a team that has to do AP approval and, and payment runs. And that often can take quite a bit of time, depending on the volume, especially depending on the volume of invoices and payments that need to go out and the channels that those go through. So I remember 
going through the payment run and it used to take us a day and a half because we would have to do manual exports, review in CSV and Excel, and then do uploads, review again, get approvals, and then go through the payment process and go through the entire approval process and review process once again to ensure that the information that we uploaded was intended, there wasn't any data that was corrupt, um, and we've received all the data that we needed and all of the approvals were there and, and also then managing cash management. So that process used to take a day, and a day and a half and it was a big pain point just for the accounting team. So to lose a day and a half on a weekly basis is significant. I remember telling my boss, my former boss, now that we have Coupa in place, the Coupa team was actually fairly accurate where it will reduce the time significantly. We went from day and a half to two hours um, from for the payment process. And that was many more hours that me and other individuals on the team had, including the CFOs, uh, the, the VP of finance, and who's now the CFO, their time in reviewing the payment process and ensuring that we had the good controls in place. So significant efficiencies there. And then with the R&D team, you know, the, the process that it takes to, to decide on what needs to be purchased and getting all the approvals that are needed uh, prior to Coupa for us was uh, fairly lengthy and the controls weren't as great because of the systems that we were on previously. But now because it's automated, a lot of the bottlenecks are removed because Coupa has functionality where individuals can approve uh, through their email and it flow through the Coupa platform. And then when we have payments, we have uh, really good reporting through Coupa and through our and through NetSuite, so we're able to um, have better, more in-depth reporting to the CFO uh, or to the payment releasers and to other members of management as to what our spend is and who's driving that spend. And then, um, so a lot of the bottlenecks have been re reduced significantly. Awesome, that's great to hear, David. Anything that you wanted to add from an R&D perspective and some of the efficiencies that your team is? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think for us, I mean, I've already touched a little bit around lab supplies, but um, this actually was just around a week ago where, um, you know, we had our, our lab um, manager, operational manager kind of reach out and say, hey, you know, not everybody's sending me their orders anymore, which is duplicate, duplicate work, right? And she basically freed up, you know, half of her time that we can actually repurpose and, you know, reduce an additional hire. Um, that we, we would have probably had to do um, relatively shortly, you know, pushing 75 people uh, here at the company. Um, and I think to echo what Rohit said was, um, I think that self-service aspect, if you sell it correctly um, to the employees um, and they buy into it, um, is very helpful for everybody. And once they start doing it, they actually enjoy it because when they go in, they now have visibility. And one of the things that I liked about Coupa when I was looking at it for the overall employees at, at the company to use was, it's very easy to put comments in there and documentation, which is also great for the finance team because it, it documents things for audit, but it also allows individuals to provide questions right in Coupa and it stays in the history. And also when it's going through the review process, you can actually like watch the little bubbles as it, as it gets through the process. So you actually know if there's a bottleneck and you're like, hey, how come my boss hasn't approved this for two days? You know who it's sitting with. And you can either ping them in Coupa, Slack, email, but like you actually could without, you don't have to go to finance and say, hey, David, wh wh you know, wh where's my PO in the process? And, and obviously that takes a lot of time. If I don't get back to them, right, it all slows down. So just having the visibility that they can see where it is in the process, we get a lot less questions. That's great to hear. Yeah, and we want to make it easier, right? You know, whether it's someone in the science or someone that goes through that approval process, really speeding things up so that they can stay focused on your mission and help you guys progress, um, you know, that science forward. And so that was a great answer really up from the lab side, but there's also a tremendous amount of spend. It's actually 70% of the $4 trillion, 70% is service-based spend that goes to Coupa. So David, you know, I think this would be a great question that, that you can answer. Um, really, how does Coupa help you better manage spend with CROs and CMOs and some of the service contracts uh, that you have in place today? Uh, yeah, that, no, that's a good question. So, um, you know, I think on, on the finance side, I think one of the, the biggest wins, obviously, coming out of it is when you have the access to data for your CRO accruals and CMO accruals that 
as everyone knows, takes a significant amount of time. It's usually a critical audit area. So you have your auditor in and they're, they're really big into that. And now you have visibility data for a really good base to kind of start your approval process, um, you know, coming out of a, you know, SOX compliance system, right? Um, and then if I'm looking at um, the actual individuals, it, it, it kind of goes back to what I said before. I, I think, you know, individuals have visibility to their POs, right? Um, multiple people can have access to the POs. It's however you want to set it up. You can restrict POs. You can have have it open so anybody can see them. And one of the nice things about you know these larger service POs is there could be multiple people. Like we we use Farmeron for example, and there's there's a you know a large PO that we have that multiple people use, and we have the ability to you know have multiple line items obviously on your PO, but we can also route invoices to multiple individuals that are actually working on those services. Um, or even if it, it goes to the wrong individual, they have the ability to send a forward that invoice over and say, hey, was this service performed, right? So it, it really allows, again, that self-service piece where the R&D team now has visibility on their invoicing, they can route things around uh, without coming back to finance um, and, and kind of streamlines that process. And you know, I think one of the, and the last piece, I guess I actually walked through this whole process backwards, um, is we ended up, um, we actually, we, we got the contract management system, which I think you saw in an earlier slide. Um, and one of the, one of the wins for us on that, um, when we were kind of pushing it with the executive team was really, look, can I, if I could have a P2P system that starts with contracts with the same visibility that individuals have with their, their POs and invoicing all the way through the payment, and they only have to go to one platform and log into one place and they can see it all it, it's it's again a, a win for them on trying to manage their own projects without coming to finance and reducing those questions for us right so um, having that all in one place and the visibility there um, contracts through payment um, has really been uh, this is actually well here at hotspots the first time i did the clm to the p2p and um it, it went really well. And, you know, if you don't hear a lot of people complaining about a new system, um, you, you know, that's a good thing, right? So no, nobody likes change, right? So um, getting it in was was a good win for the company. Um, and, and I've heard that a couple of times from our executive team, so. Oh, thank you, David. Um, there's a question that was in the chat that had to do with adoption and change management. So we're gonna cover that in a second, but I did wanna give Rowan an opportunity. Anything that you wanted to add from on the service side? And have you seen from Cooper? Yeah, you know, one of the things um, what David brought up about accruals is really important because that helps you from a gap standpoint, right? Accruals and what your expenses are at a certain point um, where for early stage companies, if you're not commercial, one of the things that's really important is uh, cash. Cash is king, as the saying goes. So what we've been able to do is when we create our POs and they're going through the approval process and you have POs for CDMOs and CROs and they're multi-year POs, multi-million dollars, we are able to, during the negotiation process with our CROs and CDMOs and the design of the PO, we're able to determine what stage and what are the payment milestones that need to go out and approximately when. So we pull some of that data into our descriptions. So when we're reviewing our POs, effectively the budget for that particular service provider or program, we're able to determine when the cash flows, the, the cash outflows are going to happen. So that has been really helpful for us. Um, and Cross Country was really a really great thought partner when we were thinking about how do we wanna capture the cash outflows um, so that was something that I hadn't done in my prior company, but I did that at Tectonic and it's really proved to be extremely beneficial because I can run a lot of reports, right? Because we're, we're an early stage company. We may not necessarily want to allocate, um, certain funds to an FPNA platform or to another system. And this is one way that we've been able to leverage our POs and the reporting right out of Coupa is to determine when those payment milestones are going to happen. And those are also in parallel with how the service provider is going to be invoicing us. So we've really taken a very granular review of our PO setup and design of that to help manage cash. 
That's awesome to hear. Well, thank you for sharing that. There was actually a great question follow up to this, really, from Chris. Uh, so, Chris, thank you for this question. It had to do with if there was any specific specifics on how you record those milestone payments. Do you use any custom fields for that today? Um, so we're well. The way we track those milestone payments is purely by our uh, GL string. So the milestone payments are, um, and Chris, you may be getting to, you know, what is a prepaid versus what is not a prepaid as of a certain date. Um, we have those milestones as individual line items on the PO. Um, and typically at the stage of the company that we're in, those milestone payments are related to certain types of activities or a group of activities. So uh, we do have custom, we have fields, um, which is part of the Coupa billing, uh, billing strings, but we don't have anything that's additional that's custom, but it's the description. And what's really nice is the descriptions that you put in your PO lines are what come over into NetSuite. And so as invoicing is coming through, you're able to have a lot of granularity um, into NetSuite, but also within the Coupa platform. Um, but you know, you, you do have the ability to use custom fields. We just don't use custom fields for milestone payments because we make that part of the PO process. Awesome. Thank you, Rohit. Excellent. Thanks. And, and maybe kind of one last question just to kind of close out the um, sort of the employee experience and the productivity that the tool um, has, has brought for both of your companies. Um, Earlier, Rohit, you had talked a little bit about how many of us have very, very lean teams, and I, I'm assuming that's probably the, the case for many on the call based on some of the headcount. Um, and you've talked a little bit about um, the automation and the scaling as well as improvements with the financial close. So kind of thinking about those themes, I'd love maybe a quick stat, if you don't mind, sharing the size of your teams and, and any other highlights that Coop has provided for um, the close with, with automation or with accruals. So. Sure. So we have uh, my team is a part time uh, individual who works on AP, so a procurement analyst. And then we have a staff accountant and an accounting manager and myself, and we're all very hands on. We have had significant growth, as I mentioned, from 29 employees to 54 employees and um, at a really big growth point of our company. So there's just been a lot of doubling. Um, but what's really what I want to emphasize is with the volume that's increased, our procurement analyst is not someone who is just working on AP, where they're taking invoices from an AP inbox or reviewing what's in CXML. Because of what we've been able to, the functionality and the automation that we've been able to leverage out of Coupa, the procurement analyst, and I'm, and I'm specifically calling out the procurement analyst because usually individuals that are processing AP don't have a level of acumen, but this individual has been grow so has been able to grow so much in their role that when we're reviewing recs and POs, they're actually they actually have the time to spend and review contracts before they even come to my review or the accounting manager's review and make sure that those POs are set up in accordance to the contracts and they're looking at additional financial data. So Coupa has allowed for significant efficiency in these areas. And this individual works around 30 hours a week, right? So um, sometimes a little more, sometimes less. So the efficiencies that we've gained to be able to handle that volume has been significant. So the other aspect to that is how it's helping with the financial close. Every individual on the accounting team is able to do more than what they typically would have been done if they didn't have if we didn't have such a robust system. So people are able to, we're able to close faster. We generally close our books within uh, five business days on month end and quarter end, we give ourselves a little bit more time. Um, but we have really good reconciliations and um, Coupa has helped with, especially with the AP process and accruals. So we're able to download all the data from all of our POs uh, from Coupa and then work with the business line on percent complete at the line item level, which is a significant part of uh, companies that are audited and have clinical accruals um, and CDMO accruals um, in biotech. Great. Thank you so much for that. And, and David, would you mind sharing the, the hot spot stats as it relates to um, your accounting team size, as well as um, any efficiencies and impact with the close process? Uh, yeah, sure. Of course. I, I always hate talking about staff size because I think it's, you know, depending on your company, I, I debate this a lot with 
um, the executive team on how we're hiring out finance. So we we currently have four people um, as well. Uh, we have a staff accountant. We have a manager um, of finance and accounting. We have a FP&A, a VP of finance, FP&A focused, and myself. Um, and but I will caveat to say, you know, with us, we, you know, we for us, like our responsibilities are broader than just a finance role. So like we have, you know, obviously we have our, you know, we do, we do contracts, procurement, uh, business operations, like facilities, build outs, stuff like that falls on the finance team, which you typically wouldn't probably see depending on the size of the, the organization or would be sitting more in operations. Um, and we also, of course, you know, brought all of the accounting in-house and all the financial reporting in-house other than a technical resource, obviously, when we're, we're getting non non reoccurring transactions that we want to want to bounce against um, somebody outside the company. Um, and so I think when you when I when I look at it all together, I think one of the things that it's very hard to quantify is we never mind that we we you know we kept the staff the same. It's also the level of um, compliance that we've created, right? So you know, where you you're I guess you could say you're you know, public company ready or whatever the term you want to say, you're, you're, you're scalable to that level. Um, and you basically built out a whole control environment that takes a lot of oversight to document, right? And kept your team the size. And on top of that, we've in, we increased employees as well, right? So when you put it all together to keep the same the team the same size, the amount of um, visibility to data and accuracy uh, of data coming in and control, especially around contracts, mm -hmm. um, in the system uh, is, I mean, I think speaks to itself in volumes, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like thematically what I, what I was hearing a lot in your response is the control and compliance component of um, of Coupa. And I think that's really one of our next themes that we really want to cover as part of the agenda. And um, Rohit, I'd love for you maybe to take the lead on um, helping us understand how Coupa's helped um, you demonstrate your financial controls, how it's helped with your third-party compliance, and perhaps even how it's um, impacted the overall audit process. Sure. So from an audit process, I'll start there first and trickle down. Um, as a young biotech, uh, fortunately, we were one of the ones, and we were audited by Big Four. We had no material weaknesses, and we were told of the types of uh, bio of emerging growth companies and biotechs in the area, you know, we were able to do a lot of things much faster and our controls that we had created around cash movement and rec to PO approval and invoice payment were really good. And a lot of that was definitely attributed to Coupa. So we, I definitely appreciate this. Um, and what we've been able to do, so now let's talk about, you know, payment, even before a payment review, you have a requisition and you have contracts and you have um, POs. So our process has been that when there is a requisition uh, or something that the business line, lead, business line needs, if it's not going through the CXML punch out, that there is a contract of some sort. And we that contract is brought into the requisition that everyone reviews. So it's an attachment that lives there forever. And then people will review it, ensure that all of the coding, as well as the um, what's on the contract and the requirements and the obligations are listed, what people are trying to, what the R&D team is trying to purchase, if that's there. So we're able to tie back to the underlying detail on the PO and the requisition to the contract. So that's really helpful for support because <clears throat> often what happens is companies have a separate repository for their contracts and the audit comes around and they're like, oh, where's this contract? And next thing you know, that's living in someone's email inbox and that email has been archived. We have everything living in Coupa. So we do our best uh, to have that there. So it's easy to find. Um, payment batch approvals and payment reviews, you mentioned those. So <clears throat> that process is extremely fast. Mm -hmm. The process, as I mentioned, um, you know, four to 500 plus invoices in a given uh, month. So it's pretty significant. Um, and then there's a lot of follow-ups and questions that come up, but we're able to batch payments based off of due dates, based, based off of vendors, based off of, uh, you know, sometimes when you're making payments, you're not making payments just based off of due date because you have certain credit limits with service providers. So we have to factor that in 
when we are making payments for invoices that we need to pay so we don't exceed our threshold for credit limits and go, don't go on credit or shipping holes. So the, the process of selecting invoices to pay and the time of making payments, releasing batches, scheduling payments for the future, that process has uh, been very much streamlined. And again, I, I alluded to this earlier, you should take a day and a half, it takes a couple of hours now for the team to do this. Um, so what's also really important is you can document the review process within Coupa. So every party, you know, if they have a separate offline file and then they have that file coming in, they can attach it to the payment batches and they can also document what sort of approvals have gone through Coupa. That's all documented. So the audit controls there are pretty strong, um, but you can add comments within the payment batches as well. And if there's adjustments within the payment batches, you could take those invoices out or make adjustments pretty easily. You can partial pay invoices. So that entire process that would often take hours and um, time and you know making sure you have the credits applied, all that is um, streamlined. Um, and ultimately that, you know, as I mentioned, it goes into the audit process, it goes into your audit report um, when your auditors are looking at controls and you're assessing your control matrix and what sort of processes and procedures you have. And I just want to add that in 2022, I was building out my finance and accounting team and I didn't really start until August and we went live with Coupa, you know, shortly thereafter. So we were building out these processes, so they didn't have a full year. They didn't even have institutional knowledge when we were going through this process. So mm -hmm. to be able to be audit ready and have these processes in place within four months, um, I think it's you know it's a testament to having a really good platform. Oh, th thank you so much for such a robust answer. And, and the former auditor in, in me loves the the how rooted it was in controls and compliance. So uh, happy to hear that there's that log um, that was so helpful with, with the audit. Um, David, is there anything else you'd like to, to chime in? Yeah, you know, um, just uh, one thing to add to the payment process. I mean, one of the reasons why we went with all of the modules that we did in Coupa is that payment process that we just walked through it's the same for reimbursable expenses. It's the same for corporate cards. So it's a very easy process for the team to learn and it's all within the same system. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would say is if I take it like a step all the way back when we were talking about the systems and what systems to go with, uh, especially since we started on QuickBooks at my current company and, and Excel, right? Was um, when you start looking at like ITGC controls or you know controls around the systems, right? You know, when you when, when I when you go with one system, I eliminated a lot of SOC reports that I have to review, for example, right? Or potentially have to mitigate something. Um, and on top of that, it's also access controls. Right now, it's not in five systems. I only do it in one system. Uh, when you look at your delegation of authority matrix, right, for sign offs and approvals, it's all managed in one spot in the system. So. That carries forward over to now my reimbursable expenses, corporate cards, my payments, my POs, my contracts. And, and I just update that in one spot. So it's one review where if your systems aren't all linked uh, and that, that information either has to be manually updated or maybe it's feeding it from ADP. I haven't, I haven't done that before, but um, you know, some of the source, it's a very manual process and it's, it's asking for a potential risk for a control deficiency um, I think when you start having all these different in, in scope financial systems that you know the auditors are going to start looking at from that aspect. Oh, ex excellent. I think that's that's so helpful and maybe brings us to kind of a, a good time to pause and maybe talk about, um, do a quick polling question. Um, we would just love to get a sense from the audience um, on in the next 12 months, what is your top priority? And it will allow some time for everyone to, to respond back and definitely would love to kind of shift a little bit of the conversation to talking about, you know, the justification, right? Anytime there's a new software, there's multiple solutions, there's only so much money to go around and so much of that money needs to go to R&D. Um, so I definitely am looking forward to talking a little bit about your path of selecting the software and, and how that worked. But before we do that, maybe we can see what the answer is for the next 12 months for the for the poll of the group of people here.
Good. We don't have to change our next questions. I think we're li we're lined up. So, looking like the the leader here is definitely efficiently scaling for growth, uh, which is you know just I think so speaks to speaks to really the industry. So super excited to talk more about that, and then of course um, that cash burn to get to the ne next milestone. So, um, with that, I'd love to. Um, to switch it back to the panel and ask a little bit of questions. So David, uh, perhaps when you're thinking about, there's many different solutions in the marketplace for companies to consider. Um, it seems like many of the people here are, are using NetSuite as an ERP, but I'd love to understand a little bit about, you know, why Coupa versus using other point solutions that could be baked into an ERP like NetSuite. Um, why Coupa to manage your spend process? Um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question, right? I mean, I think, Obviously, after my third time, I tend to do less and less due diligence. But I mean, I think when you're first looking at a new systems, right, if it's the first time you're going through it, you want to go through, do your due diligence, look at different products that are out there, which which I've done multiple times. And I think when, when I was looking at Coupa, you know, I think, um, and I'll, I'll speak to NetSuite in a second, because obviously it easily bolts on there. But um, I try to also, I was trying to think about the stakeholders, right? You know, so like, obviously like the finance team, which as we said, there's only four of us, right? There's certain things that I would love to get out of a procurement system. Maybe if it's, you know, flexibility or I could design all the stuff or whatever, right? I'm looking at different information that I want from that for the monthly close or financial reporting. Um, and I find a lot of the systems that are already like in the ERP are kind of have, have that feel. And I, I just felt like, it, it didn't really sell to the user. And I really wanted to get like a buy-in from our from our, the main users, which is right, our, our scientists, other people in GNA, right? And when I when I sat down with Coupa and you, and you go through the, you know, um, walking through the system, you know, with Mike and stuff where they come out and they give you a, a tutorial, I was just like, wow, I'm like this is pretty user friendly, right? It's like, it has a nice little pictures on where people are, it's, you know, it's very intuitive. It's the same in each kind of module. So it's like, this, for me, it's the same feel if you're doing expenses or if you're, you're, you're doing POs or contracts, right? So, you know, I love when people start, I you know, usually get those questions, right? You know, like, where do I go to do my expenses? I'm like, Coupa. Where do you go to do contracts? Coupa. Where you, you know, so I just log into this one place and you can basically do all your administrative needs, right? And we just have to train you once. I mean, if someone can understand the, the PO process, they could probably go and do expenses without you actually training them on it. It's like, it's that simple, right? Um, and, and I think, you know, other than that, you know, we have ADP. So we're really down to like two main systems that, um, you know, our employees go to, to kind of get done the administrative stuff, which again, administrative stuff is always hard to get people to do, right? So if you can make it easier, it's one-stop shopping. They don't have to learn each different uh, systems feel and look um, was, was really, um, of a good selling point for Cooper for me. And then I think when I looked at bolting it onto an ERP system, right? Um, everybody knows if, if you're using a NetSuite type system, super flexible, right? It's very easy to bolt something on. Um, the finance team can design it multiple different ways to pull information. So that, that's where like my flexibility is for the finance team. So I was kind of like, okay, if I get this information into NetSuite, I know I can do a lot with it. And that's a big win for me. And I, you know, I, and I think, you know, looking back at the Coupa system, I'm like, well, that's a big win for the other 71 people in the uh, in the company. That's an awesome answer, David. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I had a follow up. I just want to see if Roe had, had anything to add, um, and then we're going to move to, I think, another important topic on, you know, the deployment strategy. But Roe, anything that you wanted to share on, you know, why doing this in one place versus the point solutions? Yeah, simplicity. And, you know, when you think about, when we think about systems and controls, the more systems that there are, the potential for breakage is stronger, right? The, just by sheer properties of numbers, uh, the more you have, the more um, good things can happen, but bad things can happen as well. So for me, I like to just share a quick story. It was a uh, October 2020, we were in the pandemic, and it was my daughter's uh, second birthday. And the prior system that we were on crashed, and users were not able to, our R&D team was not able to use it. 
we were on the verge of going IPO, just a few months to the IPO. And um, I had taken the day off for her birthday. And the R&D team, because that system crashed, was not able to um, make purchases. But also the reporting that we were getting out also crashed. So we had issues in a lot of different areas. And I had reached out to my boss, uh, the VP of SVP of finance at the time, uh, asking for assistance. And he was a master in system implementation. So he provided his insight. And at that point, we determined, uh, and because of his system implementation experience, the thing that he mentioned to me at that time was, you know, automation, automation, automation. How do you get, you need a system that can speak with other systems. So you need, you know, and usually that's an API feed. So you need strong API feeds. You want something that is going to work very well with your ERP system. And, um, you know, some additional background is I had actually worked at um, a spend management, one of the largest spend management companies solutions in the past um, out in Seattle. So I had insight as to what a good system should look like. So when you have, so I had some perspective and insight, but when, when that crash happened on my daughter's birthday and I had to spend time away from, you know, during the pandemic, uh, spending time on solving for this issue, it really resonated what I had learned at that time about having systems that were um, automated, that were reliable, and there was a strong API feed. So we just, when we went out to market, we really looked at what was appropriate and what was gonna be a strong solution that was gonna be scalable. Um, and have good control. So for us, that that was the the key aspect of it is, and that's why we landed at Coupa. Um, it also helped that my boss had previously implemented Coupa at a very large company uh, in the biotech pharma space. So that for us was, you know, it was tried and true. That's awesome, Marley. Well, thank thank you for sharing that, and certainly remember those stories. And you know, it's awesome to hear, you know, how now you're, you know, second time customer as well, and have done this, you know, now at a smaller place and really helping create that simplicity for your end users and helping the business scale. And, you know, same thing for David, right? Getting their arms around everything. So whether it's purchase requests, contract requests, supplier requests, processing invoices, payments, virtual cards, and expenses, that one user goes to the same place, you know? So some great messages, right? That certainly helps you get that, that buy-in from, from all of your teammates as well. I know that you both engaged every department that would be a part of that decision so that when you made that recommendation, everybody was on board. So as you make the recommendation, there's a lot of folks that are on here that are considering different options. What, you know, would you suggest as how to prioritize this? What are some of the messages that you would say? And why would you prioritize doing Coupa sooner than versus doing it maybe somewhere down the line? I'll go to you, Rowan, first. For that. Sure. So, you know, in that internal buy-in and determining who the stakeholders are, it's more than just finance. We're the often the administrators of this program, of, of this platform, but who it impacts significantly is the R&D team. So what we had done um, at my last company and where I am currently is we reached out to the R&D team and asked them, what is it that they like about the current platform that we're on? What is it that they don't like? What would they like to see fixed? And what are the challenges that we're having? And in an ideal scenario, what would you like to see on this platform um, if we were to make a switch? And they gave us all of these, you know, they gave us a plethora of information. Um, and that really, when we approached it in that way, and you talked about, you know, then, having one system for T and E and for uh, Coupa Pay and for um, P2P, it's just for all the solutions, it was just so easy. When we went to leadership and laid everything out, um, you know, the pros and cons, and they, quite frankly, there were not any cons, there were only pros. Um, so for us, that was how we did the, that was our approach. And um, we got a lot of good input. And then from there, we looked at, well, based off of the input that we received, what is the solution that's in the market that is appropriate for us that's going to scale that's tried and true um and that was and it was very easy to quantify as well yeah no, i think it's really important i know we we certainly work with anyone that's evaluating coupa to put together those value cases and hopefully those customers that have deployed coupa are using that to track so that is really important how you can see the impact 
of some of the goals that you set before the pro project and the progress that you're making in relation to your industry peers and best in class companies that also use Scoopa. So really, really great insights there. I know we're coming up near the top of the hour, but I wanted to ask one more polling question for the team before we get into a couple last questions for our panel. But what spend improvements is everybody trying to make uh, in 2023? And so we really are trying to understand a little bit more if folks are focusing more on getting that visibility, which it sounds like from before, driving efficiencies, um, some of us, especially as we build out a procurement function, are trying to drive savings with sourcing events or consolidating or negotiating suppliers. Others starting to really assessing those suppliers or optimizing their payment processes. So we'll give it a minute for folks to respond to our, our last polling question. All right. Awesome. So again, you know, everyone's trying to make life easier for the end user and capturing that spend. And, you know, as we heard today, if we make it easy for everybody, give them the one-stop shop, we're certainly going to be able to do that and drive that automation to help us scale and stay focused on our mission. Um, so just a couple more questions before we, before we wrap things up, you know, I want to, wanted to bring this to David, you know, you, you've deployed Coupa and NetSuite several times together. You know, what was your um, strategy you know, in this deployment, and what advice would you have for your peers? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I think just to, you know, piggyback off um, Rohit, I mean, I think, look, I always try to champion employees. We all know there's individuals in our companies that you could probably go to and say, hey, we're trying to put a system in. This is after you kind of do, you know, get, get your list of what everybody wants. And I actually will go and actually walk them through um, the system, you know what I mean? Like the PowerPoint slide or whatever, and kind of get them involved to actually see what the interface is going to look like, just to get them talking around their group to kind of also start pushing that tone from the top down to the team, uh, that it's like a, a positive change and there's a lot of good things coming. Like I said before, I think punch outs, you know, I, I, I was running around the lab, I think everybody was talking about them at one point, you know what I mean? Like before we even had the system finalized because they were very interested in it, right? Um, and then I think, you know, I, I think the second piece is, you know, once you decide on the system, so if you're going to implement Coupa, um, and I, I just went through this process, what, a year ago, make sure you have a good thought partner consultant that can go through the process with you because the, you're not, we already run lean, right? So you're not going to have enough time. You may think you have enough time. You're not, right? Something's going to come up, a business transaction, you know, so you don't want to bring in a consultant that's just going to go through the motions. You want to have somebody that's going to come in, understand, you know, the financial statement process, have some background on the team on both sides to kind of help you through that when you're when you're looking on changing your process. Because one of the, the mistakes that I've seen happen in the past is people take what they're doing today and they just want to put it in the system. And, and, and that's not what you want to do. I think Coupa is nice in the fact that there's flexibility in the system, but there's also guardrails, right? So you know you're still compliant when you kind of get through the whole process. But you do have some flexibility, but don't be afraid of, of change management because I've, I have a lot of people that push back on it. And then once it's actually in and running and they just forget the old process, it, it's, it's gone and they actually will see the efficiencies coming out on the other side. Um, and and um, I did use cross country for my, my last implementation. Um, and, you know, I, I think, you know, so I focused on those key things with them about making sure there's someone there from the finance side, a good system person to kind of walk me through so we can connect everything. And then, you know, I actually, I've put NetSuite in four times, not that I'm counting, but, um, and, and, you know, really with NetSuite, I, I, because there's so much going on in Coupa, because think about all your controls are going to Coupa if you, if you put in all the modules, right? So that's like really a lot of your core complicated stuff all the way through payment and treasury. And then really NetSuite's just capturing the data and we kind of said, okay, we're gonna go, maybe we'll go a little bit light on NetSuite because we know it in, in house well enough to kind of just, you know, save some money over there. And we kind of like, you know, said, hey, we really wanna make sure that we have the right team in place and consultant in place to make sure Coupa's right. Because again, Coupa, everybody in the company sees it. You might have a hiccup with NetSuite, you can kind of fix it. You're gonna still run parallel controls and you're gonna catch this stuff going through your closed process. But if Coupa goes out and there's issues, um, it's going to echo through the whole company and, you know, they have that one person and it goes right up to the C-suite about, you know, why they don't like the system and you lose that buy-in. So it's really crucial to roll that out um, the first time really well 
that the company accepts it. Um, and um, well, I think that I think that's fair. But that's that's typically how, how I sell it. Awesome. No, great point. I get my my last question for you, and then I'll let turn to Jen to to, to wrap bring us home. But you know, would you recommend doing this you know sooner? You know, as a smaller organization, or what are your thoughts on timing, David? <laughs> Well, hopefully nobody laughs at me. I, mean, I, 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 I was actually putting it in with 10 people at a startup company. So I'm like, I, when I went through the interview process, I was like, look, if you want me to come over, this is my playbook. Um, and this is what we're going to need. If you want to ramp this thing up in six months to a year, like we're doing it today. And now you only had, I only had 10 people to get a buy-in. It was like the easiest thing in the world. Right. I mean, you could like literally sit in the lunchroom and, and kind of, sell, you know, sell it to the company. And then of course, as people come on, now you're training as they come on, right? So they know nothing else. Uh, and it makes it, it makes it very easy to implement it. So, um, you know, I found, I mean, I actually like the earlier, the better, even on the fact of if you start thinking through the amount of, the amount of more data, right? So every year that goes by, you know, how much data do you bring over? How much detail do you bring over to your systems? Uh, you do leave some stuff in the past, right? But now you don't have full visibility to all of your financial records. It's still in QuickBooks, right? So you start having to make all, all those decisions and the further you get out, the more time it's going to take to bring all that over. Um, so I I now push it pretty much when I, when I come over to a biotech, I'm usually like, first thing is my system roadmap. And I'm like, let's let's get this thing up and running because there's going to be so much going on. You, you, you The system tends to get pushed if you start getting too far down financial transactions or business deals and the finance team is too busy to do it. And then it's, they start, the can starts getting kicked. And then you find yourself, you know, in a company that has a bunch of band-aided systems together, a lot of manual processes, which we kind of talked about before. And now you're going to try to unwind those and you're at 75, 100 people. It's just very hard to move the ship. Yeah. No, great points. And we're seeing that trend a lot more, David, you know, especially the folks that have done it in the past, like you, right? And they decide, hey, they moved to a newer company. We want to make that process adoptable, simplistic, scalable, allow them to focus on doing their job and really bring the most value to the organization. So really great tips. Um, Jen, I think you have one last question uh, for the yeah. team. One, and, one uh, last question, of course, but thank you for everyone. I know we're, we're two minutes over time, so I know some folks had a, had a drop, but um, everyone will get CPE. You'll get a link out at the end with the survey that we ask everyone to do, but maybe just to close, um, if, you know, Rohit to start and, and David, please chime in. What is kind of that, that final win that you're most proud of as it relates to the convo that we've had today? Yes, um, the most proud of when is the efficiencies that we've had in the controls and processes, but also the cost savings. And when I say cost savings, it's real cost savings, like hard dollars. I've had uh, the R&D team, they don't have the time to shop around, right? They're like, I need this experiment. I need this. I need these materials. I got to just do this. And I need this yesterday or I need it today. I had an individual who was with our prior platform, never concerned about, you know, dollars. They, because of Coupa, and I was floored because I didn't really believe this or ever see this until I saw it in my current company. And that was that this individual, they were purchasing some um, assays and chemicals and reagents. And they were, they told me, they said, Rohit, I found this exact item at two, with two suppliers. One supplier is charging me over $1,500 more per unit. And with what I need over the course of the year is, you know, is going to save you $50,000 if I go through this one supplier versus the other supplier. So then the supplier reached out to us and said, how come you're not buying XYZ from us anymore? And we let them know it's because you're charging us so much more than, you know, if we go to this other supplier for the same exact thing, for the same exact quality. Sometimes these uh, items have, they differentiate in quality, but it's literally the same exact thing. The supplier ended up changing their price. Um, but so better for the greater good. Um, you can thank Tectonic for that. But I was really proud and really, I was really happy that someone who's in R&D who doesn't care about price usually was bought in inherently through the process, bought into savings and $50,000, you know, for some company, depending on materiality may not be a lot, but if you think about it from a cash flow standpoint, and if you tie it back to how many bonuses does that fund at the end of the year for our employees, 
I think you'll care about $50,000 or even less. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What a great story, Roy. Thank you for sharing. David, anything on your end before we jump? Yeah, I mean, I know we're over, but I'll just add to that real quickly. I, I think, you know, my biggest win, I think, is, is just seeing the seeing employees buy-in at the end of the day. You know, find, finding finding a system that I could put in, and I, I we got employees to buy in consistently over different. I've been at different companies, right? Different cultures, and I just had success with getting people to buy in to the Coupa platform. Um, and like I said, I've, I've had other systems, and and this has been by far the one that I I feel like I you know people. I'm just gonna say I don't get complaints, right? You know, it's like if you don't process payroll, everybody comes and complains, and no one says thank you. You know, so I think, you know, that that's my big win, my big win with Coupa. And, and again, I think I think the punch outs, like you said, it was a big win. I actually got comments from my lab team saying like, hey, you know, we're getting a pretty big discount compared to what we were getting before, you know, just going through it. I think, you know, just getting the buying power of Coupa, which we didn't really touch upon. But, you know, you, you're, you're able to buy into Coupa and, and their vendors and their discounts, um, you know, through the system. Right. So. Absolutely. No, thank you, David. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you and Rohit and Jen, you know, for taking the time. I know uh, we went a little bit over today. So thank you for the panelists that, that joined us today and sharing your stories. And thank you for everyone in the audience that, that, that was able to listen in today's discussion. We wanted to summarize with some very quick takeaways, you know, from today's discussion today. Um, obviously, we really want to make it easy, right? Make it easy for everybody. If we simplify that process, as you heard from David and Rohit today, we're really going to get that adoption. That adoption is going to lead to that visibility which will lead to that control and compliance, right? Which is extremely important for all of us. Bringing in everyone into the process as well. Your executives that, that Rowett had touched upon, different stakeholders in the lab or purchasing or supply chain, if you have those departments today, operations, of course, finance, legal and IT, really making sure that everyone understands how this is gonna impact them in a positive way. And then doing it earlier, right? You have less people to train, you know, less suppliers to reach out to, and now we can set that foundation really scale so that we can focus on ultimately our mission and lessen some of the manual processes that might be slowing us down. So I really hope that today was helpful. Um, I know we tried our best to answer as many of the questions in the Q&A today, whether it was live or in a response. So everyone will be, will be hearing from uh, their dedicated account executive. Uh, we are looking forward to hosting more of these virtual sessions and, of course, an in-person session uh, with everyone in the coming weeks. So. Um, I'll turn it back to Jen to wrap things up, but I really appreciate uh, the time today, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. I echo everything Mike said. David, Rohit, thank you for, for your insights and the conversation. Um, you know, housekeeping for those who who want CPEs, you'll get you'll get a survey and we'll send you the certificate back. So hopefully um, that helps people with the, the end of the month uh, renewal dates, as I know many, many controllers and CPAs on the line may have. So thank you all again. And of course, if you need um, to continue the conversation, we're all happy to talk. So. Thank you. Thank you.